You're listening to the Modern Acre Podcast. Every week, you'll hear from the entrepreneurs, innovators, and leaders that are changing the food and agricultural industry on and off the farm. Your hosts are Tim and Tyler Nuss. They are brothers, fifth-generation farmers, and entrepreneurs who have scaled tech startups, developed international supply chains, and built brands. The Modern Acre is ag built different. Hey guys, you're listening to episode 116 of The Modern Acre. Tim and I are coming to you live with quarantine update number 37. How is quarantine going for you, Tim? <laughs> quarantine is going well, you know, just checking items off the, the house to-do list. Um, actually took our puppy whiskey to a group puppy training class on Saturday with social distancing measures in place, of course. But uh, actually, she got her first shake today, so I'm super excited uh, dog parent about that right now. Wow, really proud moment. Dog shaking, that's impressive. Yes, she loves treats and finally figured it out, so we're pumped. Yeah, similar to you, um, we are using the opportunity to do some home improvement, did some painting of our trim and baseboards, very exciting stuff happening at the Nuss household. But now that we've thoroughly uh, put to sleep our entire audience, um, we're super excited about this episode today. We're finishing up a three-part series that we're working on with Farm Together, which is an investing platform that allows retail investors to invest in farmland. And they have a focus on regenerative ag, and they're just doing some really awesome things in the space. And today we have the significant pleasure of interviewing their founder and CEO, Artem Milinchuk. Yeah, it was really fun talking to Artem. He has a background of 10 years in finance, in food and agriculture and farmland. Prior to founding Farm Together, Artem was employee number one and CFO and VP of operations at Full Harvest Technologies, a now post-series B2B platform for buying and selling produce. We actually interviewed Christine Mosley, the founder of that company, um, a few months back. So definitely go check that one out if you haven't listen to it already. Artem holds an MBA from the Wharton School and a, B, and a BA and MA in economics from the Higher School of Economics. Yeah, it was a ton of fun t- talking to Artem. I think it really brings this whole series together, really digging deep into to why he started the company and his background in finance and being at a successful startup, Full Harvest, what ultimately led him to to start and found Farm Together. So, a, a ton of fun. We really enjoyed the conversation. Let's jump in. Hi, Artem. Welcome to the show. Great to have you here. Great to be uh, on the show. Thank you, guys. Yeah, we're excited to talk to you and hear more about your journey starting Farm Together. But before we do, um, you recently posted a blog post about regenerative agriculture um, that we thought was really good. But maybe talk us through some of the key points there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So regenerative agriculture is just you know the latest uh, fancy word maybe for sustainable agriculture, but we really like the word regenerative because it it hits at the core of the potential of agriculture, where not only it allows you over long term to rebuild the wealth of the soil, but also to actually deliver returns that are uh, better than conventional, and that is driven by the fact that you actually decrease the amount of input. So you know in short, uh, there's two ways to kind of do farming: you either Kind of building slowly soil health through practices like no minimum tillage, increasing soil fertility, things like that. Um, or you can uh, kind of be actively inputting the fertilizers to get that uh, you know, near-term return. But uh, the issue with that is that over time, you tend to degrade the soil to uh, um, remove a lot of that you know, rich uh, diversity that exists there, and you get things like fertilizer runoff. So we, we've been doing a series on this, and... Uh, you know, the core of regenerative agriculture is really about implementing sustainable practices while also long-term increasing profits. There's tons of work that has been done on this already with large institutes starting from, you know, UN to Creation, a Creation Institute, Delta Institute. And just, you know, this week, I believe the leading pharma investors in the space, this is truly the who's who of the, you know, the pharma investing space from Novin to Prudential to UBS to all the other ones have uh, published a new standard called the Leading Harvest. And it's really a uh, industry unifying standard around sustainable regenerative agriculture. So Farm Together and our team uh, actually helped contribute to this um, a bit in our previous roles. And we're looking to sign up for this standard. So 
uh, you know, overall encourage you to check out our blog on farmtogether.com and also leadingharvest.org is another great organization that is, you know, uh, leading the church. Um, one number I'll leave you guys with is uh, the estimates on uh, regenerative say that if we invest about $700 billion in that capital over the next 30 years, our net financial return will be over $10 trillion. And this is not accounting for all the, you know, the, the planetary benefits as well. So it's good for the planet and it's also good for profits. I love that. And I I couldn't agree more. And I just think, you know, we talked about it with David a little bit about your guys focus and emphasis on regenerative. And I think it's, it's a super savvy move to really have that be a a core part of what you're doing with respect to farmland investing on top of, you know, all the benefits that you guys have with your technology and the way you're sourcing deals. I think it's, it's super smart. And obviously, Tim and I have talked on the podcast a ton about, you know, why we think regenerative is, is really here to stay and really beyond a buzzword. And so we're excited that you guys are, are focused on it as well. Artem, let's take a little step back here. I would love to learn more about your background, where you grew up and, and really your early career. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, as you can tell by my name, <laughs> uh, I'm uh, from the Eastern Europe origin, what used to be Soviet Union. So I was actually born in Soviet Union, raised in Russia. And one thing about Soviet Union that uh, anyone from there will tell you is that actually most people, especially around cities, had this uh, sort of subsistence plots called dachas. It was a little patch of land. And uh, unlike, you know, today where you might have uh, uh, someone, you know, doing it for, for the hobby, you had to plant. Otherwise, you would kind of die. <laughs> so we all uh, would go every summer with my grandparents and I would be you know, five, six year old uh, helping them pick up like the box from the potato plants and helping them plant and, and harvest. And you do that every year. So in fact, you know, the country would stop and they would send your PhDs to, as we would call it, you know, to the potato <laughs> to collect the potatoes. So that kind of, uh, you know, subsistence farming um, sort of is something that I grew up with. And that led me to, uh, you know, a deeply ingrained um, belief that uh, it's really nice to, to kind of have land <laughs> no matter what. Uh, land is something that is real. Food is something that we need. And so that's why I love being in the space, in this sort of uh, our you know, fast-changing financial and technological world. You know, nothing, especially today, right, in this environment. It's just really nice to be building around something that is uh, as real as it gets. And so I love, I love the space, and I've been in it for uh, kind of uh, in professionally since 2004. But my kind of my other hat, my professional hat, has been finance. Uh, I really uh, believe that finance done well can lead to wealth and prosperity for everyone. And done poorly, you know, you get the situation that you have maybe today to a certain extent, a situation that you had in the 2008-9 financial crisis. And so I really want to bring the, you know, the good financial tools, the creative financial capital to farmers and to farmland and to drive, uh, you know, large impact for land as we discussed in regenerative agriculture, but also for the hardworking farmers and for the investors as well. I think, uh, you know, farmland is a great um, investment tool. It's a great uh, investment to have in anyone's portfolio. So we have a bit of a, maybe a bit of a cheesy tagline inside Farm Together. But we say, you know, we want every American to own, own a piece of America. <laughs> so um, really something that I think um, I'm very passionate about building and in it for the very long run. Artem, maybe talk us through the actual origin story for Farm Together. You've been in been in finance and had early exposure to agriculture. When did the idea come about and how did you kind of get the ball rolling to actually turn it into a business? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, as mentioned, I've been in, in, in professionally in the space since 2004. Today, I've a bit deeper into it. Mostly it's been in finance. So I worked for companies like PricewaterhouseCoopers. I worked for companies like Ontario Teachers Pension Plan, which is a large Canadian pension plan. I worked for um, sort of a private fund that invested into farmland in places like Canada, Uruguay. So um, it's always been on the investment side with focus on food, on uh, agriculture, on farmland. And the idea itself came to me around 2015, 2016, when actually uh, the first backers in Farm Together are the founders of uh, Grammarly, which you may know from the people that obsessively correct your grammar now. it's something, you know, maybe <laughs> there's some similarities there because the Grammarly guys are Ukrainian, which is part of my origin. 
And they created Gamli because they just found English to be so incomprehensible in terms of rules. Uh, and they built a fairly successful company there. And we've been good friends for many years. Uh, at that point so in 2015, 16, they came to me and they said, you know, we'd like to um, invest some of our uh, portfolio into something that is opposite of technology. And I immediately said, well, duh, you know, farmland, it's as opposite as you get. Uh, and we started looking into ways for them to, to invest in farmland. And really, there was very few options. So I know there's, of course, a couple of publicly traded REITs. There's some funds here and there, but really when you look at the size of the market, right, and again, how critical farmland is to our very living, um, it was just amazing that for a market that's 2.5 trillion in US, another few hundred billion in Canada, there was so few options to invest in farmland. And at the same time, you know, you had that explosion of crowdfunding platforms and other instruments. Today, you can invest into your shares of like racing horses and the old cars. But then for the most fundamental asset class, there was very few things to, uh, to invest through. So that's kind of how the idea really came to me. And then on the other side, I was working at the time for a big pension plan. And, you know, for them, for uh, pension uh, plans, for endowments, for foundations, farming is just a very natural investment. They think in time horizons that span, you know, 70 years, 100 years, really generational uh, type of investors. And it was amazing that even for someone as forward looking as their teachers at the time wasn't as active in farming as one would think. And so just looking around, I thought that, look, um, I have the background of investing in farmland. I have that institutional experience. I also have that entrepreneurial mindset. I understand how a retail investor thinks about it. Um, and I have this wonderful partners and mentors and the Grammarly founders to also bring the right technology to this asset class. So sorry for a bit of a long, long story. Just one last step there that happened before jumping into farm together I actually also spent a year as the first employee at full harvest which is a b2b marketplace for fruits and vegetables that gave me the sort of the a bit of that foundation uh the the training to to also build a, a startup build a, a marketplace before jumping and starting farm together in early 2018 i love how all those things you know really came together uh for you to be able to s- be set up for success and really launch this this company. So, Arda, maybe talk about maybe some of the challenges early on to get this thing off the ground. You're you're this one person. You ha- you have the right experience. You have the right idea. You have funding. But how do you how do you get it off the ground and start hiring employees? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I was very fortunate that uh, my two friends, so Max and Alex, the co-founders of Grammarly, knew me for a long time. Um, and they essentially took a chance on me who was maybe like a, a first time founder, uh, and provided some initial seed funding. And that funding really went toward exploration of the space where we knew it was an attractive market. We didn't know yet what it actually looks like. Uh, and so that, that time was spent really, you know, researching different ideas, researching legal structures, uh, talking to a lot of different farmers to understand where we can bring value. And that, you know, that took a while. Um, the the biggest challenge, I think, uh, was really uh, convincing enough of that initial uh, investors into Farm Together. So our backers, our uh, kind of venture capital investors that, um, you know, people will want farmland. I think in the, in the sort of angel funding venture space, people tend to be a bit more tech focused. And uh, we were just really... Um, it was hard for us to bridge that gap of convincing sort of the angel investors that people want farmland because they look at things that return, you know, 10, 100 X. So they would say, why would someone invest into something that is a 10% return? And then I would have to explain, well, it's actually a really good 10% return. <laughs> You'd be like, <lucky. laughs> um, so I think that was honestly just uh, the process of, you know, evangelizing the space. And it's not just me, look, there's the whole industry is doing a tremendous amount of work, uh, bringing, uh, kind of communicating that this is an important market uh, to invest into and to support. So I would say that was the biggest challenge. Artem, we'd kind of like to switch gears here and talk a little bit about the landscape of the the finance space within farmland. There's a couple other platforms around. How do you kind of differentiate yourself um, in farmland investing? You know, first of all, uh, we we like to say that farmland investing is a blue ocean. So it's really 
less than 2% of farmland is owned by all kinds of investors. And 98% is owned by kind of um, farmers that are operating it by non-financial, um, sorry, non-farming investors. So it's it's still a very nascent, very new space. So really, we don't you know bump heads with each other. It's not like we're in a crowded you know uh, food delivery space or something. Uh, but with with that in mind, the way we kind of uh, position ourselves and what we focus on is a. Uh, more so permanent crops. So this would be West Coast, this would be you know, your tree nuts, fruits and vegetables. Uh, secondly, we really, um, our, our, our core soil, our DNA, DNA is institutional investing. So we spend a lot of time bringing that mindset to how we underwrite everything. It's a very, very comprehensive, very structured way of thinking about investing um, because of our, maybe a bit of our Silicon Valley roots as well. Uh, we work in a lot on bringing tech to the top process. So it's um, uh, everything from uh, uh, geospatial imaging to local uh, labor markets to dynamics of your end products and taking on, you know, a global approach there uh, goes into our underwriting. Um, and then I think it's also uh, the our, again, our focus on impact on regenerative. So we don't have those deals yet. There is a deal that is in the works. And the partnerships that we have created with companies like uh, Terraton, which is a big um, uh, initiative to bring that impact uh, investing to farmland, is another part where we, uh, you know, we differentiate ourselves. Artem, for for those listening that are are interested in investing in farmland, maybe because of their connection to ag, maybe you walk them through the process of going to your website and, and what the the process looks like in terms of signing up and looking at deals. When you come to the website, our goal was to make it very educational. A lot of people still um, are learning about farmland, so we offer a variety of different white papers. Um, how it works, pages, uh, webinars to educate the investor on you know, why you should even care about farmland. Uh, once uh, that is kind of done, you are sold, uh, you register on the website and you can see different offerings there. We, um, we also have a bit of a playful style. You'll see kind of, um, you know, kind of picturesque, almost toy-like trees and uh, combines and farmers there. And that's because we also want to communicate the emotional aspect of land. And we, we, we enjoy what we're doing and it doesn't have to be all serious. And the farmers definitely enjoy what they're doing. So we wanted to communicate that um, as well in our visual style. Uh, the, the investing process itself is really simple. You really, you select the amount you want to buy. We show you what that is in dollars and acres. Um, on each deal, when you click on it, you can see a lot of different information, legal uh, and business. You can listen to a webinar that we do. You can take a look at the drone footage we typically shoot when we see a farm and just really in a user-friendly way, familiarize yourself with the investment. Uh, and then once you start going through the investment process, it's really, you know, 2020 <laughs> is uh, it's the future. So you can uh, link your bank account. You can sign the documents. You could fund your investment in a matter of minutes. It's very simple. It's quick. Uh, Right now, it is only open to accredited investors, but that process is also fairly streamlined. So, uh, you know, don't be intimidated by uh, by this. It's really a quick, uh, quick process. And you can always call us, set up a call. Um, you can just call the number in the bottom <laughs> of of our page, and you know, we'll pick up. So, really, it's not that it's not it's not much harder than buying like a stock through your broker. Artie, we mentioned kind of bringing through a playful style on the website and want to kind of dig in a little bit more here and just talk about your perspective on branding and marketing. We thought a lot about our brand and it's a brand that is facing the farmer, that is facing the investors and that is facing the stakeholders as well. So, you know, the word together is intentional. We spend a lot of time thinking about what we want to convey. Uh, and same with the colors were <laughs> maybe a little bit uh, cheesy, but I just didn't want any green. I think there's a lot of farming companies that use green. So we wanted to kind of capture more the colors of the sort of from sunrise to sunset uh, that the farmer sees. So it was a little bit of that as well. There's like a little sun that is rising and setting on on our planet. Um, the the core, I think, value that we want to communicate is is integrity, is how we think about working with the farmers at what, uh, how we think about sourcing the land. 
um, it's definitely there's a lot of deals we walk away from. Sometimes the price isn't right. Sometimes uh, it would be the, the water situation might not be as attractive. So it's um, we'd rather grow slower than we'd like, but make sure that every deal is truly uh, underwritten conservatively and managed well. Uh, again, we're here for the long run. I think uh, you know the rewards will be plentiful for everyone if people started thinking a little bit. Uh, longer term than just a few years. And I think farming is an ideal asset for that. So it's a long-term asset and we wanted to communicate in our brand that we're still building. It's still early days for us. That long-term thinking as well. No, I think that's that's super smart. And honestly, Artem, you must have been listening to the podcast because I've been preaching the whole don't use green in your logo for, for years now. But <laughs> Oh, I'm a, I'm a big fan of you guys. I've been listening. I think I listened to maybe like 1,500 different episodes. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And yeah, yeah, love just just the thinking there and, and really how you tie that to authenticity and integrity in the deals, I think makes a lot of sense when it comes to branding. So switching gears here, what about this whole journey have you found to be the most surprising or unexpected? I would say it's the number of people uh, that you wouldn't think have some connection to pharma and that do. So we have investors that come from like finance backgrounds, tech backgrounds, uh, all kinds of people. And when they call, it's always such a pleasure to talk to our clients, to our investors. There'll be something like, uh, oh, actually, I, I grew up on a farm or uh, I was growing up five, you know, five miles from a farm. Or every summer, my parents would take me to, uh, you know, a vineyard or that orchard or um, my, my dad or my, my granddad had some connection. One of our you know, dear your friends and clients, uh, you know, Gian, his, uh, I think he was on your podcast before you know, he, <laughs> he was talking about his connection, uh, to farming as well through, through his dad. So I think that was really rewarding to just hear how many people call and say, Oh, this is just something that reminds me of my childhood. It's something that I have a connection with. And until you guys really, you know, I didn't, I couldn't find a way to, you know, invest into this, to support, you know, this, this sector and this part of me, you know, my my life as well because you know you have to remember you know America in a way is is a is a land of farmers where people will come here they would get a piece of land right homestead act they would kind of keep moving west and west and so the patch patchwork of land you see in America you see it's it's all farming right um, so it's just it's really cool how we're able to tap into something that is um, you know so so central to some of the people's lives. Artem, earlier in the interview, you mentioned the guys at Grammarly taking a bet on you and you being a first-time founder. Maybe talk us through any kind of learnings starting your own business and running your own business for the first time. Everything takes longer than you think. <laughs> and as uh, innovators, entrepreneurs, maybe sometimes we can be impatient and we just see how it already should be and just so frustrated why it's still not that. <laughs> and just having to uh, patiently communicate that to all the stakeholders, whether it's to the people that you want to bring on board as your teammates, whether it's to investors, whether it's to clients, to stakeholders. Um, so that just takes time. So honestly, just patience, right? Especially in our asset class. And if you have sort of, you should take all the time in the world to really analyze your idea. Uh, but once you have got all the facts, and you made your decision, then you should just move forward in unwavering because you need to have that core strong conviction that this is a good idea and you understand why. And again, for me, I just, I, I don't credit that much myself for that, just uh, the, the industry we're in. Pharma is just so fundamental to how we live that it, for me, it's even when it's hard days, it's easy to still get over them because I know that what we're building has true intrinsic fundamental unchanging value until we become machines or something and you know populate the galaxy <laughs> until we're living on this planet as biological humans I don't think anything will fundamentally change in pharma <laughs> that's such such good advice I mean I think how you how you think about really look at your idea and put all of the due diligence into that idea as as possible but then once you decide and are affirmed that it is a good idea. It, it's all about patience and persistence. Um, so I think that's super good advice. Artem, as, as we wrap up this section, talk about what does success look like for you in the next year? We really want to keep democratizing access to farmland. SEC right now is going through some uh, reviews on what they consider an accredited investor that will hopefully 
uh, broaden the, the set of investors that can invest through us in pharma. So we're really excited about that. Uh, we're also working on um, bringing secondary liquidity to the platform. Pharma being naturally an illiquid long-term uh, investment is just out of reach of some people that do need that shorter term liquidity in their portfolio. So we're working on launching secondary liquidity options with our pilot uh, happening in September of this year. So if we uh, can uh, launch that and broaden uh, access to farmland for more people in 12 months, uh, that would be success. Ideally, if we can bring um, farmland to non-accredited investors, and that's absolutely doable, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when, uh, that would be amazing. So I would say for us, that would be the main goals that we're pursuing right now. Well, we're super excited to, to watch you guys grow and continue to meet those goals you have for the next year. And we'll, we'll be watching you closely. As we switch gears here to a section we call Quick Takes, what's your favorite business book and why? Principles by Ray Dalio. I love books that uh, talk about building things from first principles. Uh, there's too much kind of, you know, comparing, contrasting. We're really you have to take like a basic physics almost hat on, put that on and think about things. The principle by Ray Dalio would be my favorite. Super good book. And it honestly hasn't been brought up enough on the podcast. So I love that. <laughs> love well, I'm you. also a finance investment guy. I've been you know, following him since 2008. His letters from Bridgewater. So that yeah. was an easy one for me. That's awesome. What's something you've changed your mind about recently? That... I understand the stock market and that's why maybe I'm in pharma, right? <laughs> it's just, to me, still to this day, kind of blows my mind a little bit how how much the financial, the stock markets have recovered versus still how much uncertainty and pain there is in the world. People are getting laid off right and left and right every day, but the stock market just keeps rallying. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just being humble about my understanding there and sort of keeping our heads down and building the farmland investment space, because that is definitely less volatile than the stock market. What are you spending too much money on right now? Uh, <laughs> be watching seasons of more than family on Amazon and paying too much for, <laughs> for the prime, you know, the seasons there. What are you not spending enough money on? You know, it's, it's hard because right now it's such in a, in a bunker mode in a way, but um, I would say probably on good books. Less modern family and more good books. What issue or trend do you find most compelling in agriculture today? So I would say the use of uh, certain automation tools. Uh, I think in a lot of industries, people are concerned about technology taking away their jobs. For farmers, it's actually right now a question of survival, especially with COVID, uh, with, um, with the challenges of finding talented, hardworking people. Uh, I think that's going to, for the U.S. farming industry, which is a globally leading industry, it's important to continue embracing uh, automation. And it's part of our you know, long-term thesis that actually farming in the future will be kind of your kind of middle class, almost like a white collar uh, job where you'll be able to farm from in the comfort of your home. So I think that's a really exciting trend. Well, Artem, as we finish up here, this has been a ton of fun. We've we've loved having these conversations with with you and the Farm Together team. We're we're really big fans of what you guys are up to. As we finish up, how can listeners get in touch and connect with you and Farm Together? Yeah, thank you guys. Likewise, love your podcast. I'm so excited to be on it. Uh, farmtogether.com is uh, the best way to kind of check us out initially. I also encourage you to email us at info at farmtogether.com or me personally at artem at farmtogether.com. That's A is in Apple, R is in Romeo, T is in Tango, A is in Echo, M is in Michael at farmtogether.com. Not the easiest name sometimes. And look, our phone number, we, we pick up uh, all the phone calls we can. If not, we'll, we'll redial. And if you email us, we will reply. So uh, we are a... Uh, agile and nimble firm. So we have all the time to talk to people that are excited about the future of agriculture. Awesome. Thanks so much for being with us, Artem. Take care. Thank you, guys. So, Ty, what do you think? 
what a way to finish off that series. I, I want to invest in Farmland. Uh, I'm super excited about what they're doing. And, and Artem was an awesome way to, to finish this, conver- this conversation with Farm Together. Uh, so many lessons in there from a first-time founder and, and really his perspective on things. I love how he talked about you know taking time to really determine if your idea is right and do all the upfront work. But then once you decide, you, you have to be patient and you have to persevere. I think that's super true. I feel like I have a lot of parallels and feel similarly about the modern acre of really you have to put in the time um, we're, we're over two years in and feels in a lot of ways like we're just getting started and seeing some of the, the fruit of, of our labor for, for two years. So I definitely resonated with that. Yeah, it was super fun talking to Artem and um, definitely encourage all of our listeners to go check out Farm Together and look at their platform. If you are interested in, in investing and you aren't an accredited investor like uh, like Tyler and I, it looks like that's in the pipeline for them. So hopefully soon we can uh, we can get on there. Totally, guys. Check them out at farmtogether.com. And I know they would love to to hear from you. They're super accessible guys and, and really want to hear from people in the industry and how you're thinking about things. So feel free to reach out. And thanks again for Farm Together for participating on this series. It's been a ton of fun. Yeah.